Cordy, what's your middle initial? L. And your first year? 7568. Thank you. So, uh, where do you work out of medicine? No? Huh? No. Um, what's your address, James? Uh, 4122 County Road B as in boy, Manitowoc, Wisconsin, 54220. A good telephone number for you, Jim? 920-973-0702. So you're a Manitowoc individual. Oh, yeah. What's the affiliation between you two? Courtney did a lot of investigating, and she got a hold of me because she knew I had a lot of information. He used to date Debbie Hoxtetler? I told him that. Oh, okay. I dated Debbie for five years. But then after I broke up with her, I did just kind of give up on the case. That's why I got everything in such a mess right now. But I got paid for it. Okay. When did you, how long did you date Debbie? From when to when? Two years ago. So it would be seven years ago. Five years I dated her. But you've been broken up for two years, I think, is what you're saying, yeah? Two. Okay. Her grandchildren were more important than me. Than I <laughs> <laughs> that happens, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I never was married. I couldn't find nobody's nice to do so. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. There you go. You might use that line. What do you think of that? You were oh, God, you're quiet here. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> we know the truth. So lay it on me. What do you know? Well, well, you get what you got. I just want to talk about what you know because we have some questions too. We can't ask any questions because they won't answer any of ours. So, and who's they? Well, Manitowoc, Manitowoc County Sheriff. Sure. Sure. I got letters that and we all. I also called. They said the case was closed. They don't even have a case number for it. So there isn't really much they can help us with. In, uh, let's see, what was it? A couple years ago, there's a. I guess we just started looking into it because we are curious of what happened there, and then I don't. I and you're so. When you say you looked into it, am I, I don't want to minimize or I want to understand, you're community members, right? Yep. That, that's, I mean, yeah, I don't want just, to say that's all, but well, see, that, that's what you are, We feel like right? there's, we absolutely feel like something's going on and we're looking for the answers and we're not going to stop digging. And one of the things is the Ricky Hoxtetler hit and run. So it's, there is a lot of people looking at it and trying to figure What's it out. What's your, I mean, you live in Appleton. What's your interest with the Manitowoc? angle of things um because i have already met with your boss jeff wish in september of last year the year before on a case that i'm accusing um mike clazer of corruption at calumet county so i had an interaction with with jeff wish that didn't go so well and i didn't really get my answer so i kept digging at everything i could look at mm -hmm. so um Met Jim over some stuff we were well, looking you met at. Debbie, I met and Debbie, Debbie sent her to me. Yeah, because she didn't really. She thought if Jim, with if with anybody would know some when answers, when did you meet Debbie? Jim. Two years ago. Yeah, about two and a half years ago. Yeah, no, it's a year and a half, maybe two. Yeah. Okay, I yeah. don't know. Yeah, I went to Manitowoc and we had Debbie and I had lunch and we talked about my brother's case and her son's case and. I knew a little bit about her case from, you know, reading about it, and we had gotten gotten the case file and all of that. So I met Jim, and we just sat down one day and started looking at each other's records and talking about the case and, you know, looking more into it. So there's a, a Reddit page called the Ricky Hockstetler case where people you know, ask questions and go in there, and Debbie Hockstetler is a part of it, I think, or knows of it. And so in 2000, well, it was last year, last year, somebody had put on their, can you they, just, can you just yeah. hold on, I, I just want to, that's pretty important because he refused to give it, what's so, that, that letter, I, I printed up, that letter was printed by me for Debbie, you know, which to is Dean fine, Strang? she signed it, is this the one to Dean, or, this is the one to, uh, Sheriff's Department asking oh. for the. Uh, the OJ to get involved? No. Oh. That was for asking for the pictures. And he refused them because he said it would hamper their investigation. 
And they also told her she couldn't handle it. Now, you wouldn't have a copy machine, would you? No. Not on us, no. No, no, I didn't think so. For so, what? You, you mean they have copies? What about if I would leave you that stuff? If, if, if it's important to you, I can leave it. If you would give me copies back at some time? Yeah, we can give work? you copies. This isn't... That's not important? Uh, not really, because... Okay. Um, it, 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 it lays foundation for what you're probably going to try to, or, you know, what you're going to inform me of. Uh, well, see, that was but, in 2016. I'm, yeah, I'm writing oh. that down. So, I'll tell you this right now, and, I mean, I appreciate that, but if you were made a request for information with DOJ sure. on this case, you wouldn't get anything either. Oh, you wouldn't? No. Okay. It is literally an open investigation. I'm the case agent. Well, see, they I, told me it was closed, but then it's open with the DOJ. Correct. Okay. So okay. if there's any open case with it, okay. um, th there's just, it, it could potentially harm the investigation. But you see what I was doing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. yeah absolutely. Okay. So uh, all I'm saying is, respectfully, that doesn't mean much to me. Sure. And I'm saying, if you gave me a letter today to request. You refuse me to. Okay, sure. DOJ would refuse that because sure. we're working on it. Sure. There's, there's, there's things that we're doing on the case, and it just, we wouldn't want to harm the integrity right. of the investigation. Right, okay. Um, but I, I mean, I, I appreciate you sharing that with me. That, sure. that helps me understand. I'll show you what, what they're, yeah, yeah, we got other you know? stuff too. To sure. I, I want to get yeah. as much out as I can because this case can be solved. Okay, yeah, so it, we um, we got on the Ricky Hawk Settler page, we got some information and, you know, just followed it. We know Deb, I could talk to Jim about things. And then um, we, we know through talking to Debbie and from you that she tried to, in 1999 or soon after, she asked, I think it was James Link, to give it to the DOJ and he told her, that you didn't handle vehicular homicides. So she ended up calling down to the DOJ in 2004, which is when you, I can't remember the officer's name, but he took, he said he would take the case. So you have the Crime Stopper report and all the police reports, right, from 1999 on, right? The whole, it's like 1,100 pages of the investigation. So we have it, we were able to get it, you can get it online as well and went through it thoroughly and we know a lot about uh, different people in the area and we knew who some of the people were that they were looking at and we also had suspicions of other people because of stuff that we knew so we got the i don't know where it came from right now somebody it was an ad, in 2004 right be, they, in february of 2004 the department of justice took over I think it was two weeks before they did their investigation into Luke Kramer, who was who showed up on the scene, who made the phone call, apparently, anonymously or not. It's real hazy who made that, if it was Sandy Schindler or if it was Luke Kramer. He was the first one on the scene, though, Luke Kramer. Did you ever hear that name? Mm -hmm. oh, you did? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, then you've got the information we got. Mm -hmm. Now, why wasn't I handed that? Five years ago, that was kept out of the file that I got, the 1,100 pages. And John, you, know, you heard of John Ferrick, right? John Ferrick. From USA Today and always with uh, at Rockford. Well, he wrote all the articles for Debbie, and I worked with him. Took him to the scenes, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, John Ferrick don't have it either, and he's got the 1,100 pages. But you are aware of it. <clears throat> well. It's 1102 to 1117. Yeah, I mean, your, your stuff is not going to match. I, I mean... Okay, well, is this what you got? I have never seen it until Courtney gave it to me. I have never seen it till what? Three months ago? Two months ago? You not barely even. hear Luke's name in any of the investigations. No, nothing. Except for him being the first name on, and he's the one that showed up.
know, this is kind of interesting talking to you too. As long as we can make sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. Otherwise, you just go beat around the bush. I've been beating around the bush with this cone. It's unbelievable. Yeah, and, and what, see, uh, what, where you're at a disadvantage is I don't think you'll truly ever have all of the information until oh, or unless, you know, so without a doubt, there are things you don't know. I mean, there's, there's, I mean, there's been very, very recent work that I've done. Well, so you're working at it right now. Yeah, it's an open investigation. Oh, That's what okay. I'm saying. I'm, I'm the case agent. I've been working on this for years. Okay, really? well, I'm going to start asking okay. some questions then of why you and haven't you're not solved gonna, this and, and you're not why gonna we get much. have. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for well, sure. You know, well, I'm a little upset something. that there was $100,000 spent in overtime in this county, and I have 82 cents in my savings account, and I put a lot of work into this. Yeah, and those are those are political things that no, really No, they're not political. Really we expect matter. our county to do their job. Sure. And they're, and so we've you had actually to do know this. the case pretty good right now. Really? I know I, I know it I, I know it well enough sure. from a historical standpoint. Well we could add stuff well, we, that you don't know. Yeah, Am I right? And that's why I'm here. Yeah, right. With all due respect, ma'am. Okay, I'm I understand. frustrated. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm gonna I'm yeah. not and, angry and, and, at you, and, I'm frustrated. And, this and kid you can take all the justice. frustration out on me. But you taking your frustration out on me on political stuff, it's, what it's a waste of time. Yeah. What's okay. political about me wanting my an, county to do their job? First and of all, they, you, you live in a different county. It okay? doesn't matter. I'm a citizen that pays taxes, and a young man was left to die on a road. So I'm never going to give up. I'm, yeah. I can be passionate about I this. I might cry. But you ain't going to gain nothing by arguing I'm with not somebody? trying yeah. to. I don't want, I'm so, not political. So, so. Well, well, talking about the, the, the overtime stuff, that's just my caption of what okay. that is. Respectfully, I don't care about that. Okay, that's well, not what you pay. I do. Okay, so let's let and, it go. And, and do solve the case. Exactly. That's what it exactly. Is. Okay. Yep. And and I'm here today. You're gonna solve the case. Try to solve the case. I am here today to learn from you if there is any new, different, or actionable intelligence to go on for this case. That's oh, that's yep. what I'm here okay. for. So if you have information that is new different or is worthy of some sort of follow-up that can be done yeah i want to do that okay here's two guys they're two manitowoc city policemen i'm familiar you got their names well they went to the county and i know them both they went to the county and they were refused to give any information on the accident and i just seen dave uh Monday. But he's saying that they're not going to give anything anymore. No, no, but this might help. He can contact oh, these people and ask them what they got. To, right? Yeah. Am I right? Gotcha. Or am I wrong? Well, I mean, so from an investigative standpoint. See, they're detectives. I understand. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yep. If they had information, they can't withhold it. They would they would offer that. So you, what you're, what you're saying is, they wanted to offer information and, and they the couldn't. Wouldn't refused it. Is what I, what Dave told me. Okay. That's what Dave told me. But you'd have to contact them and you'll be real honest with you. They're good guys. They're you know? Manitowoc, the police department. That would be the city police. Yeah, yeah I know. I, I know Dave. Okay. Yeah. Okay. A oh, nice guy. I know his wife too, Amy. I was with both of them. No, what you're looking for is information. Absolutely. I mean, I presume that's why we were called. Right. Right? Right. And that's why you contacted us, mm -hmm. to offer information, yep. right? Yeah. And I, I, I appreciate your your passion. I That's very honorable. But understand what our roles are. I'm going to stay in my lane as an investigator, and those overarching allegations or opinions or ideology things, respectfully, that doesn't matter in an investigation. Right. You, you know, I mean, you can, as a taxpayer, I totally understand being passionate. And, Let's just and not, get to it. I understand okay. what you're yeah. saying, and yeah. I've been, this isn't my first rodeo, yeah. and I know what's, what's and up here. Thing, so. uh, there was 
two city cops at the scene, Hyler and there was two of them. So I went down to the city of Manitowoc Police Department. I know the girls there. And I, I asked for a report because if you work for the city, you should give us a report back to the city of Manitowoc. Am I right? Or well, again, it's like an open rec records request. You can you can request. Right. There was nothing any... on record that they were ever at that accident, and that you can check. But but was it included in the county investigation? Their names were in the county. Yep. So they'll they're typically this isn't uh, an absolute, but typically there won't be dual reporting. So uh, I'll give you. But I'll try to report back to the city that they were at the scene. That's what. No. No. Okay. Well, uh, well, so you, if, if Tammy and I go to an incident, and let's say she's with the police department, I'm with the sheriff's office, and, and we both come to this scene, and we're both there, one of us will do that report, okay. not both okay. of us. Um, will there be some sort of very, very minor record that she, from her agency and me with my agency, and like, can't, now, I mean, now it's much, much different with record keeping than it was back then, but, you know, she would maybe have CAD report entries yeah. that, you know, she, you know, her arrival time and, and, and her clear time sure. or something like that. But for any detailed information, there's only going to be one report. Okay. Now, I would okay. presume, uh, and I, I, I'd have to check on that, I would presume if they did anything of substance, if they took any official action, that their report would be in or with the county report. And because that's a county investigation, the city isn't going to release that because it, it falls okay. under the county's yeah, it was on the county, incident. The city. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Okay. So, if, if if what you're saying is is accurate, th that could be that could be an explanation. Yeah, it, it could be. No, because I I know the girls there because we do the auctions with all the bicycles for yeah. the city. You know, so I know them all, and they they didn't refuse me, but they said there's nothing here, Jim. You know. Let me just, hold on, uh, I just want to get this. Now here's another guy that come up, he was a county cop at the time, and he moved up to Cross Plains, that's up by Madison, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, he's a real honest, I know his dad and I know Tommy real good, and he got out of there account of the corruptness in that church department. Now, I don't know if you ever had his name. Did you have this? Uh, I'm. I'd have to check. I mean, because well, there's so much. There yeah. is so many. Right. There's so many reports. But I wrote that report number down. Oh, well, you can and, get it then. And, this and, is and mainly I, what we're here about. This, yeah, that's this the main whole one. thing. And I, I'll, Anything I'll check else to see is, if I um, have that. So uh, now, who are you cases. saying about what's the deal with Tom and Tom Joe? Tom Jansen was a county cop at the time, and he said he had information, but he couldn't come up with it. But he left the county a corner of the corruption, is what he said. Now, did you, his name ever come up anywhere? Um, I don't. That, well, that you know of, yeah, right. This, one, this doesn't sound familiar. Well, what's the difference between Tom and Joe? Joe's his dad. He lives in Manitowoc. So, but Tom is the one. Tom is the cop. Yep, he's in Cross Plains. Yep. Is he currently employed? He's got to be getting close to retirement. I would think so, yeah. Now, when you say he had information, do you know what that information no, no, was? No, no, So he personally told you, I had information. His dad told me and Tommy told me, yep. And they said he had information. On the accident. But it was never documented or they wouldn't take it? I don't know. Unless you didn't want to get involved. I really don't know. Okay, so I don't want a whole bunch of loose ends here. So you're saying he left due to corruption. Yep. The Manitowoc County yep. Sheriff's Office. And he had information. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, he right. had information? He claims he had relation and, or, I mean, information. Okay. And his dad told me, too, yeah, Tommy knows a lot. Because I know Joe good. Okay. You know? And you don't think that that's been documented? Whatever Tom knows. I never seen anything, no. 
Okay. I never seen his name come up on anything, but I said I know the family, so that's how I got it. Okay. And another thing I would like to bring up real quick, uh, the body shop is involved with, uh, in this Luke Kramer deal, that body shop, which mm -hmm. was, what was that? Uh, which one? But the one next to Herman's Junkyard, Cleveland. Yep. That body shop? What this has come, this has come up. Yeah, oh, yeah, you know what body shop. Herman's. No, no, right next door, the body shop. It was Kramer's relation. Oh, Marv? Marv was the... Oh, K&J Auto Collision. Yeah, K &J. that one. Okay, a guy come and told me years ago, there's a, a shop at Hika Bay, which is down the road from Cleveland. And it's still there with the same name, Dossie or something like that, or Dassey or Dossie or something. Anyway, some guy heard it on the scanner that we got the vehicle in the garage and somebody, the dispatcher told him, just leave the scene. Just leave. Leave it there and leave. That I just got too. That was on a scanner. But, you know, I don't have no facts on that, but it's something to check into. It's a garage. It would be east of Cleveland, down by Hika Bay. Dossler, Dossler or something like that, they told me. We are so not under the belief that it was the Hermans in any way. See, I mean, always was pushed on to the not, Hermans. Not putting it you on. Know, it was always pushed on to the Hermans. Yeah. It, supposedly it was Todd, because he was at the party that night, and I got that right here, Dan and Jan Seaworth, but now they're so old already. But they're when the you talk that, about a party. Huh? So this has been a... A food store party. Listen, exactly. I would like yeah. to stop this right here because we're not even on the track of what we asked you to come for. We don't, we, this... Yeah, but I'm a, I, this information he might not have. Is he what, should have all of this. You have talked to the, you've talked to the sheriff, everyone. But they didn't write nothing down. Is this relevant to yes, uh, these is. pages? This is the okay. woman that worked at Cop's food store where Shelby worked, Todd's wife. Yes. Yeah, so That's why we were at the party. So... There was a cop food store party at party Bilmar. at where at Bilmar at Bilmar yep. right and who and was at the yep and who was at that party Todd Herman and Shelby his wife and this woman is was the one that told me she was a manager over at cop food store and why were they at that party it was a Christmas party for Shelby who? worked cops. at for cops. cops yep but Shelby worked for cops. Yeah, she was a chicken. Yep, yep. Um. Okay. I'm just looking at if I got some. I don't know if you ever seen this letter that I got a phone call from the sheriff's department. With Shedder, can you tell me if you got something or not? Or? On what? Uh, when, when Shedder called me at home? It's in the report. It's in the report. That was me that come out with, I, I talked to a city cop about it, and I said, I think I got the right guy in. Apparently, it, he, he reported it to Greg Shedder, and then I got it here. This one. Oh, I've been on the radio. Yeah, I'm. I'm. You aware of that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Ran for sheriff. Ran for sheriff. Sure. You aware of that too? Yep. Yep. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. What the hell don't you know? <laughs> he knows a lot. Oh yeah. <laughs> so what are you? Just a helper then, or? No, I'm a. I'm an agent also. Oh, you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Boy, that's got to be hectic now with all the stuff going on. I. Different times, that's huh? for sure. That's got to be a lot of stress. And the garbage that you see. A lot. Oh, so when, you, when I said my name, then you recognize that right away then. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, I got all of whatever I said on the radio, I got all written down here. Oh, the cops got mad at me when I mentioned all the ones at the scene. I mentioned their names on the radio. And boy, I got some phone calls that day. Yeah, uh, we, in general, don't like to be exposed in media. Oh. That doesn't, well, I'm not going to That doesn't help. <laughs> that, no, that, that no. doesn't help investigations ever. Why, well, this was just local. It's a, like an open mic. You know, where you can call oh, in. Mm -hmm. And every anniversary I would call in. Sure. And bring up different stuff. And I would never accuse anybody. I would say maybe a person of interest. Okay. Well, you're aware. You've seen okay. that one? Yeah. Yeah. And you're aware of Todd Herman retiring? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh... Okay, so the biggest information that you're concerned about is that information not being what followed up on, or what, what's, that, what's the crux uh, of your... I, we went through this entire thing, and we went through the information, and sure. if you want to read it with us, that would be fine, and we have it. Yep. And it's not accurate, because we know that he says that it was his father-in-law... Well, his son-in-law is Kevin Jackie, who owns K&J Collision, and he's an expert auto repair. There's all kinds of articles you can find. Um, he also says that he, do, he thinks his son worked on it. That would be Luke Kramer. Luke Kramer was working as a Manitowoc Reserve Deputy in 1999. He was also enrolled as a, at the Lakeshore Tech in police science at that time. He's the one who showed up. He's the one who took off. He was right next. He was less than a mile from his house. He passed his uncle's uh, Marv's auto, which was his grandpa's and his uncle's, and drove all the way up to the Shell station to make the call. Instead of going to the door where he pulled in, instead of going home, which was only a mile away, and exactly where Ricky was found was the corner he was taking. And he showed back up, and all they say is he was in a small Toyota. They never looked at him again. And then in 2000, after, there's a lot more here. We have, we have, we went way deep. Mm -hmm. And and absolutely, Luke Kramer was a reserve deputy. And it was never mentioned in anywhere in here. They never mention, you know, very, they don't even mention For whether sure. he's the first one to make the call or not. Bill Kramer says he can't remember if Senlob came and checked his Suburban. Senlob says, I honestly don't remember. I honestly don't remember. Okay, then... If I would have had that... This, is this, this right here is, is absolutely it. And then they bring in Rob Herman on the last line as the sheriff, as an expert car repair witness, to look at it and say that is not the right vehicle. And it's the exact same vehicle that they've been looking for for five years and it's this and it had work done on it glazier whoever glazier is did a fantastic well, Eric, job Eric, I know him good. and he asked the questions but mike bushman kept giving the answers they wanted eric glazier's got a lot of information too, mm -hmm. but he keeps quiet he won't say a word And again, not once do they mention he's a deputy or he's in the police science program or that he's now, well, he was a state trooper. Well, they brought him in and questioning in there, too, and brought their experts, what, Bruce Jacobs and what, Ledvina, yeah. to, to, you know, determine whether he was lying or not. And the thing is, he's married to my buddy's daughter. He, we also have a picture of him with Gene Couchet Gene playing Jesus in a play that year. We also know he was the JV football coach for Ron Colley's superstar team in January that year with Nick and John Reimer, who is his mother's, his mother is Nick and John Reimer's stepsister. Bill Kramer's real big in Ron Colley. He, we also have an article of him literally driving for Lakeshore to teach, teach the, the, police how to drive in these situations so, so what are you saying i'm saying you whoever overlooked him and it's 
You know, but that's it's, what I said too. Because when I read it, when uh, Marv's Auto, we even talked to Bradley Kugel. You know, in 2016, that Andy Colburn and Larry Ledvina met with Debbie Hochstetler, and she recorded it, and they actually said it. Andy Colburn said, "Oh, you know, we think it was this weird guy named Bradley Kugel." <laughs> Well, we got a hold of his wife. Yeah, Bradley. Bradley knew he lived right next to Marv's. Rob, Rob Herman went went right in front of Marv's, which is uh, Luke Kramer's grandpa's, but now his uncle Jim owns it, which is right on CR. And um, doesn't explain that he's in front of Marv's, but he brings up Bradley Kugel, who owns the taxi service next door. His wife, widow said to me that Bradley did think something went on with that accident. And he and Andy Colburn says, yeah, it was real paranoid and sketchy. He just died, you know. He was paranoid because he knew something happened, and he felt like they were going to frame him for it. And I have her name, too. I don't know if she'll talk, you know what but... The thing is, I drove semi for her, ever. I mean, I've seen a lot of accidents, you know. And when I seen an accident, I would stop... And if the person needed help, I would help him. Mm -hmm. This guy drove up to the accident and left the scene to call. No, you don't let a guy lay in the road and go call. Nobody, you don't leaves, worry about a, nobody leaves someone on the road. Thing. And no, there isn't even a way any of us could wrap I would our never head around anybody. anybody leaving anybody in the road. There is no way unless there was something. And that's the, that's the thing that caught my eye. I mean, would I, I would never let anybody lay in the road. He could have knocked on Debbie's door. He was right in her driveway. And she says, too. He never, and then we're going to tell you about Debbie Hockstetler, too, because she received from Deb Kakash, the coroner, a uh, seal. She says it, it's either an autopsy or a letter that she denied. She didn't tell you guys about it. I got that all taken care of. Oh, you do? Oh, okay. okay. See, there you good, go. Good, good. So this one you can see. Now, Strang is the attorney that Avery had. You probably know, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so then you know she got his DNA too, huh? That who got whose DNA? That, that Debbie did, in case she'd ever need it. Isn't that what Deb Kakash told her? Well, Deb Kakash told Debbie that I want you to keep this envelope because someday you might need it. Mm -hmm. You're aware of that? Yep, okay. very aware of okay. it. And Debbie told me, and then she lied about it. Yeah. When, when uh, Courtney asked her about it, she, she lied told about me, it. But no, she said me to me, yeah, I got it. And I said, no, I'm not lying. You told me, Debbie. Yeah. She told me she's you know? protecting yeah. Deb Kakash. She yeah. flat out said it. I have it on a recording. And, you know, I'm done protecting anyone. Well, I, I know it's in that envelope. And Cause she's... That's... So there was an envelope. Because mm -hmm. I've never seen it. Yeah. But she told me she had one. And when I brought it up, I was a liar. Yeah, that, that's okay. It's all that's all we gotta know. It's okay. All good. Then I'm not a liar. <laughs> so, well, so what's we so, contacted so what's... Strain because he supposedly had information that he knew about this. The Strain did. Yeah, yep. he has the whole case. He's he got the it. whole case. He went and got all the open records and got the whole case, just like yeah. John Ferris did. And that's why I wrote to him, and he did reply back. Uh, didn't he? Yeah. yeah, he said he was too busy, he couldn't yeah. take it. Yeah, he did reply back with the... That was somewhere. Yeah. You want that one? Would that be anything? The what one? No. No, I, I mean, I have the record, so I... Yeah. Dealing with... Here's what... Here's what's a very, very difficult thing as an investigator. Is to cut through... Rumor, oh, in, right. innuendo, um, this person said this, you, you know, cutting through to that, yeah. through all of that, and getting to the actual crux of fact. who actually fact. said something, who actually knows something, who actually saw right. something, that's what, you know, so, you know, people saying I got this or that, or I know, you know, it, that's okay, that's great. But I want to talk to the person. You know what I mean? And that, that's that's what's. Well, I don't know if you got this, but there was a guy from Manitowoc who was a Milwaukee cop. That's the. And he moved it back to Manitowoc, and now he's dead. He died, but he wanted to go out for lunch with because he had information. Okay. He claims he looked at the autopsy and that the autopsy 
It showed that he was hit below the knees, which a pickup would do. A pickup would hit up here. Did you see anything like why? Well, well, we have we that. have the autopsy photos. We have exact measurements of everything. Oh, uh, okay. You where got that. where and how uh, things line up but this for vehicles? Is what this guy told me that it was hit below the knees. Um, which could have been a, like a Corvette or some kind of a small car or something like that. And then another thing, which you ain't going to know. His wife also was worked for Manitowoc. I went by Avery's so. and got a girl out of a, what was it, 85? Mm -hmm. Well, I, it had to be a single headlight. That's not me. Yeah, I... Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm just trying to help. Yeah, no, I appreciate know? that. Yeah. No, I, I do. Uh, I'll give you everything I, I have if took, you want it. I went and took uh, a girl out of a truck. The same one with the basil, and I give it to John Ferry. And you can contact. You never heard him. He wrote the Wrecking Crew. Wrecking Crew. He wrote. He wrote the Avery case. Yeah, I. I wrote, I'm involved did. in a not uh, media on a different aspect not of media. of the Avery case. So uh, on the front end of stuff, um, I, I just I, I'm not. I, I did something very very different on the Avery case. So. Okay. Some so some of the things you're saying there don't ring. Sure. Uh, but see, I took John around. He wrote that book, and he's got okay. chapter what was it, fifteen and 15, sixteen. Okay. He wrote a book on all Debbie stuff. Sure. And I took John around for two months. Okay. We checked everything out. Mm -hmm. And well, he always said Herman, Herman, Herman. And I said, John, you can't accuse somebody we don't know mm -hmm. unless he would admit to it. Well, mm -hmm. they ain't gonna admit to it. But then I had Leroy Belkey. I don't know. If the, you know. And, and the, the other thing is, is the evidence that we have, it has to match up with someone. Oh yeah, right. And when certain people have been cleared, right, because, uh, because there's no ownership, or there was, there's, there's his people's presence are confirmed in different ways and stuff. That, I mean, that's what's very, very. Right, um, but you would think in one of the newspaper us. articles or in one one of these reports, it would have said that it was a Manitowoc Reserve deputy. No, and, and, and with all due respect, <laughs> media is media. Right. I walk under yellow tape for a living. I have put my eyes, my ears, my nose, my everything on what I see under the yellow tape. Okay. I've looked at that. I've soaked that in. I've sketched. I've documented. I've wrote. I've recorded. I've, you name it. It's long been days. Thirty long years. nights. And I go so home. Will you just I, hold on? You hold know on. what? I, I go Listen, home. Still thinking. I go home. You expect me to trust you and, when and, everybody that I've dealt with in your your agency and in these counties has deceived us? Okay. I'm sorry, but I would be a real fool to sit here. I'm at, we're, I'm going to give you this. I'm asking you, I believe that it's Luke Kramer and he was overlooked. I'm giving you information that maybe you've overlooked. I doubt you would have known to look into that because you wouldn't have, it wouldn't make sense. It doesn't even make sense why they'd cover for a random guy. You know, it all does make sense. Well, I'll tell you what, I, I and it I is proof. It's right here. It's his LinkedIn profile. It. You know, I was and, shocked when I seen it because I thought I had all the information. We weren't you know, given this information, so when we got it, we're like, I was you shocked. know, it's frustrating. Never and I know anything. you're a professional. Good for you. I don't. Well, I'm not. I'm a freaking gardener. Thirty years. Oh, then you got experience. Yep. You called yeah. me here today. Yep, and I'm giving you information. I don't need you to tell me without even taking my information with you that we have to keep it. Blah blah blah. Why don't you just take it? Do with it as you will. That's all this is about, right? Media means nothing to me. Media means nothing to me, nothing. if anything. So LinkedIn pages, what people say oh. about the media, okay, I deal cool. in well, facts. All right, well, then okay. you need to take this and go find the facts because I'm a gardener and I found the facts. It's a little frustrating. See, here's all the we're trying we're to give papers. it to you. We don't need to hear don't, all of your job that, description. Like said, we are media. citizens that are just you know, trying to get justice. And that's if there's I, something we're doing political or wrong, I guess you're an, a professional that needs to deal with it because we're we're simple people. I can't go no further. 
There is no further to go. What information do you have that you feel is new, different, uh, hasn't been vetted, right hasn't, there. so this. That's it. And, That's it. And he can take this. Yeah. That's it. No, I'll tell you, I was shocked when I seen that. So I have never heard that name, and I know Mark Kramer, I know Jim. I didn't know uh, Luke's dad. What was his name? Bill. Bill. I didn't know him. Yeah. Also a mechanic. And I mean, when I seen that, I thought, and I, yeah. I mean, Herman's were the best of friends with Mark, because Mark bought all his parts from the junkyard. Mm -hmm. And did you know Rob Herman and Todd Herman's dad? And Jimmy Herman, I know them all because I run a garage too. Mm -hmm. And I bought parts from them and I know Chuck, I know them all. Well, uh, Bobby Herman was the head of, like, he was pretty high up in, their dad was pretty high up in the church department. He would deliver parts with the, <laughs> with the squad car, he'd bring them out by my garage. <laughs> That's probably a long time ago. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, in the yeah. 70s. Yeah, I think no, no, right. yeah. This is all media. I knew you were going to do this, dude. No. It's so funny. Okay, cool. Cool, well, you're right. But what, th that's all open source public media. Right. Like from, right. How, how does that?